Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and welcome to the Canon EOS R5 and R6 video training series. The purpose of this series is to focus on the video-specific features of these cameras. And in this particular video, I'm gonna be talking about the R6 and its various recording options, so let's go. Before we jump into the topic for this video, I wanna make sure that you set up your camera properly for movie or video recording. So let's just go ahead and jump into that. For the R6, what we'll do is go to the top of the camera on the right-hand side and turn the dial to the movie icon. And now we've switched over to movie mode inside of the camera. Now there are a lot of options here on the screen. I'm gonna choose manual because that's gonna give me the most control in terms of ISO, shutter speed, and also aperture. But the nice thing is, even though I'm in manual, I can set the camera to auto ISO if I want to, and I can, of course, take advantage of the autofocus system and all of those features. So now that your camera's set up for shooting video, it's time to jump into the topic for this video, which is the recording options for the R6. So now that we're set up in movie, I'm gonna go into the menu of the camera. And the main places we're gonna be are here in the shoot menus. We've got pages one, two, three, and four that we're gonna be taking a look at. And then also over in the setup menu, we're gonna be taking a look at page two. So on this first page of the shoot menu, you'll see that we have four options. One is the shooting mode, and I have that set to manual. We have our movie record quality options, which we'll be going into in a second. Movie cropping, which we will take a look at a little bit later inside of this video. And of course, your sound recording option. Now I'm gonna go over here to movie record quality. And when we jump into that particular menu, what you will see are two options. We have movie record size and we have high frame rate. When we go into movie record size, we are currently looking at all of our recording options as they relate to NTSC recording with the camera system. If I go over here back to my menu and we change our video system from NTSC to PAL, and we go back now to our options under movie record quality, and look at our movie record size options, you will see that we now see our PAL options in terms of especially our frame rates with the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back now to NTSC. So we're gonna jump into our movie record size and you'll see that we have for NTSC seven options that are available to us. We have four full HD options and we have three 4K options. If we cycle through those, you can see what those are. And at the top left, we can get our core information in terms of how we are recording with each one of these options. So this 4K option is 4K UHD. So it's 3840 by 2160. That's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. This is at 59.94 frames per second. So we could record that with sound, and this would be a high-speed recording option that we could conform in post-production and play back at 29.97 or 23.98 if we wanted to by just slowing it down in our timeline that is of that lower frame rate. But we also can see that it's saying standard IPB, and this is really the type of compression that they're using for recording the video on this camera and it's a long gop or a long group of pictures type of recording. It's very efficient. It allows us to record a lot to the cards. And in fact, if you look to the right there, you'll see total record time. And it's telling me that on a formatted 256 gigabyte card that is inside of this camera, I can record a little over two hours and 21 minutes to that card. So my recommendation would be that for the cards you're using, you're using V60 cards just to be safe, and that will allow you to record in all of the resolutions and frame rates that are available on the R6. And then we'll just cycle through some of the other options. We can shoot in 4K UHD in 29.97, in 23.98, which will be very popular for a lot of people. And you can see that as I'm changing those, it's also changing the total record time. So at 59.94, a little over two hours and 21 minutes, 
at 29.97 and 23.98, we're getting a little over four hours and 31 minutes to that 256 gigabyte card. When we jump down to our full HD resolutions, you can see here at different frame rates, we also have a similar situation with our record times. At 59.94, we can get a little over nine hours of recording. In fact, a little over nine hours and three minutes. And then we go over here to 29.97, and we get over 18 hours on a 256 gigabyte card. And that's also true of our standard 23.98 recording in full HD. There is one other option in here, which will allow you to record even more content, and it's even more compressed. It's called Light IPB. Honestly, with today's nonlinear editing systems that people are using, I would not recommend that in most situations unless you need to get the absolute most amount of recording out of your cards as possible. But for most people, it's just going to be the standard IPB for their recordings. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set this up to the way I would normally record with the camera on a regular basis, which would be UHD 4K, 16 by 9, 23.98 frames per second, standard IPB. Not that I wouldn't use the other options, but those would be project specific. And especially if it was 29.97, usually that would be a client asking for that frame rate in my situation. And then 59.94, if I wanted to record at a higher frame rate for certain types of content, and I also wanted to make sure I was retaining sound. So let's just go ahead and choose that. If we go to this second submenu for movie record quality, you'll see that we have that option for high frame rate. And we're gonna go in and enable that. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that it says audio is not recorded and we're gonna do high frame rate movies. We enable that and we are now in a 1920 by 1080 resolution at 119.9 frames per second in NTSC. That would be 100 frames per second in PAL and conformed to 29.97 frames per second in camera for NTSC and conformed to 25 frames per second in PAL. Okay, so then when I disable that high frame rate recording, you'll see that when I go back up to my movie record size, it has reset this to a full HD resolution. And that's because we switched from my setting of UHD to full HD for the high speed recording. So if I want to record again back in that other choice, I would actually go over here and set that up again. Now we're gonna step out. We're gonna talk about movie cropping now in this first page under shoot one. And if I turn that on and we say enable, it'll say some functions may be limited, such as movie recording quality. So let's, before I do that, take a look at our field of view of our image before we turn on movie cropping. And then go in here, turn it on. And this is going to give us an APS-C field of view, very close to Super 35. In fact, if you put a Canon EFS lens onto the camera body using an adapter, because that's how you would attach it to an RF mount camera, it will automatically go into this cropping mode because it cannot fill that full frame sensor. So you can see the difference. Let's go ahead and turn that off again and take a look at the full frame field of view and then our cropped field of view. And the advantage here is if you need a little bit more reach or let's say you're using this as a C or D camera with super 35 millimeter camera systems, let's say Cinema EOS cameras, you could set it up this way as well. And then the only other thing we'll take a look at is that now that we've activated movie cropping in the camera and we go in here, you can see that our high frame rate option is not available. So let's go ahead and disable that. So now we're gonna talk about a few more things related to recording with the camera. And this is really important because it does have a lot to do with the captured image that's being recorded to your cards. So I'm gonna go over here. We're first gonna take a look at the second page of the shoot menus and you'll see HDR PQ. And in the third page, we can see that we have picture style and we also have Canon log settings. And let's talk about picture styles to begin with. If we do not have HDR PQ turned on, or we do not have 
Canon Log turned on, then when you are recording with the R6, it is using the picture styles inside of the camera for the look that's being recorded. And if you've used Canon DSLRs or mirrorless cameras in the past, you'll be familiar with these. And a lot of people, in order to get the best captured image when using picture styles, will go in very oftentimes, and they will use the neutral picture style, and they may even go in and reduce the contrast and possibly also a little bit of the saturation so they're getting a little bit more dynamic range and they have a little bit more to work with in the image. The thing you should understand is that when HDRPQ or Canon Log are off, that your camera is recording to the cards in 8-bit 420. So you're using those picture styles and you're not getting quite the same amount of dynamic range and you definitely don't have as much image to work with in post-production. So the only way we can switch that over in terms of our bit depth and also our color sampling is to go over to page two of our shoot menus and either choose HDRPQ or page three and choose Canon Log. And anytime we select one or the other, they cannot be selected together, we are now going to be recording in 10-bit 422 internally to the cards on the camera. So we need that higher data rate inside of the recorded image to work with those files in post-production. We're also now in H.265, not H.264. It's just gonna be a fatter file that's gonna give you more to work with in post-production. And with Canon Log, you're gonna get the most dynamic range you can from this camera system at this time. So let's go over here to HDRPQ. This to me is really a future-proofing option inside of the camera. It will give you a very specific look and you can experiment with this and see if it works for you. But to me, again, this would be driven by a client coming to me and saying, our workflow is gonna be in HDRPQ. We'd like to capture in HDRPQ. And then we have options where we can get essentially a lookup table or an assist on our screen when we are shooting and we can prioritize between mid-tones or highlights. I would generally choose highlights. And then also when you're playing back the files on screen here, you'll be able to prioritize between mid-tones and highlights. And when we look at our image, when we are actually recording in HDRPQ, it can actually detect if there is or isn't an HDR device there. And again, this is really a bigger workflow and requires a certain type of monitor. It is definitely a flatter image that you're recording with the actual camera, and it will not spit that out as a LUDed image to an external monitor. It will show you an assist or a lookup table on your built-in screen on the camera if you set it up to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off HDRPQ. Again, not the option that I would use most of the time when I'm shooting video with this particular camera. And I'm gonna step out and go to the Shoot 3 menu, and I'm gonna to go to Canon Log Settings and turn that on. Now, View Assist here is a lookup table. It's a generic Rec. 709 lookup table that will not push externally to an external monitor. So you can see here on my left that we have a log image. But when we're taking a look at the screen itself on the camera, we can see that LUDed or lookup table being applied. I'll turn it off again inside of the menu so you can see on the built-in monitor that we're now looking at a non lutted image and we're looking at log here on the screen. Also, because we were making a lot of changes in the camera, I've just noticed here that my shutter speed is at a 1 125th and that's because we went to a higher frame rate. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that down and put that back to a 50th of a second because I'm shooting at 23.98 and that makes sense in terms of that. We'd want a higher shutter speed if we were shooting, let's say at a 60 frame per second or 59.94 frames per second in NTSC, we would want that to be at a 1 125th 
And let's now go back inside of here to our Canon log settings. I'm gonna turn that LUT back on because that's gonna help me when I go into post-production and I start to work with this image and I'm targeting Rec. 709 based displays, which are most of the displays that your content is gonna be on. For color matrix, we have two options inside of here. We have Cinema EOS Original, which is gonna be a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more saturated. It's also, as you can see down at the bottom, gonna gray out our color space options so that we're gonna be in that smaller color gamut of Rec. 709, which is narrower, but generally what we're targeting anyway. And then we have another option, which is neutral, and it's gonna map the colors differently, and that's gonna be more true to life, and you have a choice then of choosing Rec. 709 as your targeted gamut or 2020. Generally would only choose 2020 if it was being dictated by the production or you wanted to work with that bigger gamut, you do have to make sure you're applying the correct LUTs or lookup tables to that as a starting point. And if you're just color grading and you're working with that original footage, you're gonna have to know how to target that into different color spaces like P3 and 709. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it in 709. That's a good day in, day out. I personally would leave the color matrix as neutral for most of the time that I would be working with the camera. So here we have another option, which are characteristics when we are talking about Canon Log, and they have to do with sharpness, strength, saturation, and hue. These are not things that I would generally do in camera. By all means, experiment with them, and if you wanna add a little bit of sharpening in camera, you like the way the camera feels less or more saturated, you wanna shift the hue of the camera, then you can do that here. But again, for me personally, I would leave those at zeroed out and deal with that in post-production. So now we're gonna step out and take a look at two other things inside of this video. The first one is in shoot four, and it has to do with our lens aberration correction settings. And if you're going to be recording in camera with Canon Log, which I generally recommend, you'll want to turn off peripheral illumination correction. And the reason you wanna do that is because when that's enabled, you can run into situations where you're gonna get noise on the edges of your image. And the last thing I wanna to talk to you about when using Canon Log in the camera is ISO. And what you'll wanna do is make sure that you set your ISO in the camera to 400 or above in order to protect your highlights and get the most out of your camera's dynamic range. So there you have it. That is an overview of the recording options in the Canon EOS R6, and hopefully that will help you with your productions going forward. The goal is always education, so I hope you learned something here, and thanks for watching.